a wizard. What's up, Animagi, witches, muggles, and Dementors? It is time to hop back on the Hogwarts Express and go back to school. Welcome back to Potter Watch, a podcast within a podcast where the Fantasy Files and friends go through the entire Harry Potter series, book by book and movie by movie. We are your magical co-hosts, Spencer, Gabe, and officially since the last episode that you guys saw of Potter Watch, Sam, she is officially our third chair. Let's Welcome, go. Sam. Uh, today we will be discussing Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban in depth, and we'll also be spoiling the entire series. So if you haven't read or at least watched the whole series, then you may want to do that first before listening or watching these episodes. Uh, but before we get going, check the description for all of the links to our socials. You can reach out to us on there. Um, and also a link to our Patreon where you can watch these episodes live as we record them, uh, just like Shad Zaman is, just like Spacey Nova is. Welcome, guys. Thank you guys for being here. Um, but without further ado, let's talk about Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, and real quick, I'll say... It is like super hot for all of us. And so yeah. last time last time I had my scarf, I don't think Gabe got to see it, but I have like a I have a Gryffindor scarf. I believe that you I, I wore last time. Yep. Um, but it was so hot I had to order the tie instead. Atta I had, boy. To, I, I had to just get the Gryffindor yep. tie. Because I was I like, I can't do it. the robes though. You sent yeah, us I thought, like, Yeah, I saw the robe too, night. and I was like, dude, you well, could was, wear that, that robe. Was, I couldn't order it in like 24 oh, hours. No, I know, I yeah, know. Yeah. But you should still order it though. Yes, yeah. so Next that time. that is the plan. I, I've said since the beginning of Potter Watch that <laughs> for every episode, I'm going to order a new piece of the costume. So I have the wand over there on the shelf. I have oh, I haven't these. seen that yet. Yeah, it's Sirius Black's wand. And then I have um, the scarf up there on top of the shelf. Now I have the tie. <clears throat> and so... Yeah, I'm going to get a hopefully lightweight robe uh, so that I'm not dying in it. Yeah. Um, may maybe even like a, I don't know if they sell like a t-shirt robe or something. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. You just have to get your window window unit. Just make it real house. cold in there before. Yes, that. that's that's the other thing. I have an AC unit coming. So hopefully I can <laughs> then like wear all the memorabilia and yeah. not be like a thousand <laughs> degrees. Uh, but I just couldn't do it today. So I put on, I put on the the tie for everybody you're welcome and i put on the hat so uh so there we go and then also i meant to just tell you guys about this backstage i didn't even mean for this to be like part of the episode or anything but i ordered this really really cool thing <clears throat> that uh i guess i can just show you guys yeah if i uh if i share my also my i need to here. see that i need to see that wand at some point too i oh, i didn't yeah. know you had a wand i'll i'll whip out my wand for okay you whip you out your it. wand dude i want to yeah. see it yeah, I tried to find one, one dude. Dude. I have one somewhere and I do oh, not. Oh, that's cool, dude. Where I put it. Dude, is this it, not sick? That's like the, yeah, Wait, it looks like the map, dude. Cool. That's awesome. It is It is a huge map of hair, of uh, Hogwarts and all the surrounding areas like Hogsmeade. Oh, yeah. And like all, all, all the whole like the way that the train yeah, goes and dude. everything. <clears throat> and it is so cool. And I. I got suckered in. Like I don't get me wrong. I would have ordered this either way, but I got suckered in last night because I was like, I need some sort of art for this wall yeah. over yeah. here because it's it's just blank. I don't like the way it looks. Yep. I need to have it like filled in with some sort of nerdy something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was looking around, and I found this, and noticed there that it says. 3764. This thing is 16 inches by 48 inches. It's big. Wow. For 35 so, bucks, dude. 37 bucks. Holy yeah. crap. So it's gonna it's inches. gonna that's only what like a foot and a half. Not even a foot and a half though, right? Well, this but what? then 40 inches is yeah, what, three, four inches. feet. Oh, 40 super inches. Wide. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it'll fit over a whole couch. Four feet. Yeah. 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 
So um so it'll it'll look like it does there in yeah. in the photo. That's the size I ordered. Yeah. And um and so it, right it says $37, right? Below yeah. that it uh... says sale ends <laughs> in 20 hours. Yeah. You better guess, buy it, dude. Well, guess what it said last mm. night at uh, 9 o'clock at night? Ends oh, in like two hours? hours? Yeah, it said sale ends in like 6 hours or something. Yeah. Well, and so it'll I was like, probably oh. end in like 10 days then. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, I was like, oh, I gotta order it because I only have six hours. But yeah. what these things do is they just keep refreshing. Keep rolling. The so sale. every time you look at it, you your yeah. urge to buy it before yeah. the sale ends. Yeah. Yeah. And it changes so, by like a penny or two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Another so I'm thing, like, I'm like, they got me. They got me. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> I want to point out to everybody here that Prime Day is July 16th and 17th. So <gasps> anything on Amazon. Will be considerably cheaper on the 16th Ooh. of July and 17th of Oof. July. Just a heads up. I don't know if they have the stuff Good like this. Good to know. I will also say when I saw they this, do, yeah. the, the first thing I thought of was a Marauders map. How cool would it be like to have like a to have like an Marauders unfolded map? like an unfolded yes. Marauders map in that dude? Be so sick. That would be so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted I wanted some piece of like Harry Potter art yeah, that just wasn't lore. like yeah, yeah. That, that was like. Yeah, it, it wasn't like super obvious. Like it was mm -hmm. a little bit more classy, you know. Um, it reminds me of the like Hogwarts Legacy, like you know, map that you yeah. use. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, that's sweet. I would totally. Yeah, that's that's I, amazing. That thing's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Did I have a zoom zoomed in picture of it? That's what I did on my own. I was like, oh, oh there to it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, dude, that's sick. That's sick. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be really yeah. cool. So you yeah. ordered it, right? Yes. Yeah, it's on good the way. Good man. Good man. It's on the good way. Man. Yep. Okay. Smart move. <laughs> yeah, Shad. Shad likes the uh, he likes the map. Yep. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's talk about Harry Potter and the Prisoner yeah. of Azkaban, guys. Let's get our general thoughts out of the way. I have a lot to talk about when it comes to uh, fun facts. I have a lot of really cool fun facts nice. about this book um and i have some cool dumbledore uh theory stuff um but first let's uh let's just open up the floor to uh to everyone and and talk about your your general thoughts both on the book and the movie whoever yep. wants to go first i'll go first okay. <laughs> um i i've always liked the movies and it gets to a point where i feel so confused that like the last like four movies i'm like i really don't know what's going on but i like <laughs> like the the movies so i keep watching them and everyone has always said like if you read the books like it all makes so much more sense and it is so true yeah this movie made so much more <laughs> sense to me once i had read the books like the whole it is line it is like the movie that makes the most sense, like out of yes. all of them, because the movie doesn't talk about like who the Marauders See, are. I, I did. I. OK, sorry. No, go on. No, go ahead. Go, I'm good. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> no, I was just going to say I, I did the opposite. Or, really? or like I, I thought the opposite. I watched the movie and and was like, this this isn't this is doesn't make sense compared to the book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. No, okay. No, you're saying, saying the same thing. Like, the movie's okay. Never okay. Made my bad. To me, and then once I read yeah. the book, I was like, "Oh, but why right. did they leave yeah. all of this out?" Because there was so much out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So much left yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the movie, you know, <laughs> I was talking about it with uh with Nova earlier. I I mentioned this backstage. She watched the uh she watched the third movie with me last night. Nice. And um. I was saying, man, the movie doesn't really talk about. I was I mean, it, like it, surprised it, with how much. Didn't. Yeah, like it, it like just very briefly even mentions why the Dementors are at the school. We we were like halfway through the movie, and I'm like, wait, did it ever say why the Dementors are even here? Like in the movie? Like I, I know why because I read yeah. the book, but like in the movie, does it talk about it at all? She's like, oh yeah, it kind of mentioned it for briefly. a second. Briefly, yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, that's something that like, that's like a core part of the yeah. story that needs to be explained why they're there. Because yeah. otherwise it just seems like Hogwarts is haunted by these ring ray things. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, and don't get me wrong. I love the movie. Like I oh, yeah. love the third movie, yeah. but there was just certain things where I'm like, that just needed like all the scenes that it cut out, I was fine with. But there, 
the scenes that it kept but also didn't explain, I was like, yeah. that that need needed to be fixed. So the you thing, mean, like, the, the thing for, or go ahead, Sam, go ahead. I mean, like the explanation of why Sirius isn't, you know responsible yes. and why peter pettigrew is made absolutely no sense to me every time i watched the movie i was like okay yeah. i guess Sirius is like really in innocent and it was peter's fault in some way yeah. I guess. and then when he's I read innocent the book, because you told me so yeah, you told me yeah. So. and then you read yeah. the book and you're like oh yep makes so okay. much more sense they didn't explain any of this in the movie yeah all you got right. was like literally a minute of Sirius and remus saying no it's him because of this that's all you got the only yeah, reasoning like, behind it it's like i guess so yep yeah. sure <laughs> all right that's cool i'll, I'll roll with that yeah the, the thing that go ahead, okay babe. sorry one thing the thing that i noticed the biggest difference in was the fireball dude him getting his yes, fireball where was, was so the fireball? different it was so different in the book he got it so far before and it was checked yep. out by the heads of houses and McGonagall and this and that but then in the series yeah. that like happened like at the very end he just got it cool and yeah Hermione, and I I mean, in the movie that. sorry That's movie not in the movie right Hermione yeah. took him in for the N right. no yeah 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 and like I the what some of the scenes that I love from the book was him like trying the firebolt out for yeah. the first time yeah and like Ron being like can I try it and they stay and the up movie, like you super don't get late that. yeah you just yeah. get him soaring off that's the end yeah. yeah, and like they they stay up like super late, and like Ron is like yep. flying it around, and and Harry is like talking about how it responds to his thoughts rather yeah. than like, his grip. And so I I can't believe I just did that on camera. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Dude, not only did you just do it, but you just exposed yourself for I doing know. it. <laughs> no one you should have just kept moving. Nobody you should have just kept moving along. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I just I love that whole like series of events where it was just yeah. like at this this new toy that he gets to like, oh man, this thing is so awesome and everyone's like freaking out about and, and like the, gets taken the away reverence. Yeah. Too, for a little while, right? That yeah, scary. by McGonagall. Yeah. And then and just like the reverence that everybody has for the firebolt, like they set it like very carefully on like yeah. the, the lunch table. I love that. <laughs> they're like, oh, yep. shit. like the firebolt name, like up. They're like, oh, yeah. Like, I, just, <laughs> I love. Yeah. I love. Yeah. Like that's such a like teenage boy thing. Yeah. Like, totally. <laughs> totally. So, like, getting the new longboard, dude. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, anyway, uh, Sam, you, you started this out. Why yeah, don't you talk sorry. about like your, uh, your general thoughts that, on like, the, the book. books gave so much more context to the movies yes. that I felt like the movies left out very critical information that unless you were a book reader, like everything would just go over your head because book readers could fill it in on their own, like the missing details. But as someone who watched right. the movies first and then re read the books, I'm like, oh, now it all makes sense. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's what about, that's uh, what I think I was trying to get at was if if so you Sam, you just said you watched the movie first and then read the book? Yeah. Yeah, I that's, watched that's, all the movies. That's first. what I wish I would have done because watching or reading the book and then immediately watching the movies was kind of like a downer, you know? Yeah. It was yeah, like it kind of like... just Yeah, it just it like besets the book. It's like, okay, this is obviously awesome. It's a movie, yeah. right? But also where's this and where's that and why is that not happening? And where's this? So I wish yep. I would have yes. done the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. You would yeah, have been exactly. let down. We're like, yeah, and, like and oh, these were amazing. You were like, movies. yes, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I think, yeah. but in, oh, with all that said, I mean, they're both awesome. And I, I had so much fun watching the movie. Like I said, I ended it half an hour before the podcast and it was awesome. <laughs> I sat yeah. for, you know, it was like two, well, two something hours movie. And yeah, it was a long I just, movie. I just, just enamored. I was like, let's go. Let's go. I know what's going to happen here. Come yeah. on, let's go. Yep. Let's, let's see how this changes. I loved all the the like visual depictions of everything, yeah, like the shrieking yeah. shack and the yep. the whomping willow. And did you know that the I, I'll bring this up more in like the fun facts, I guess. But yeah. the shrieking shrack, the shrieking shack, <laughs> yep, there you is, go. It's on a how they did it was it was at least from the inside, not necessarily the whomping willow bit. I'm pretty sure that was all CGI, but the shack itself that they're in. It's mm. on a platform that they yeah, have it rocking moves. back I've and forth. I noticed that in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I and, noticed that in the movie. And there's all these like uh, pulleys and pistons that are like closing and opening the doors oh. and like making the walls rattle and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I yeah. like that. No, I definitely, when I watched the movie, I noticed like behind Snape that it was going like this 
It was yep. just like waving ever slightly, and I was like, I didn't, I didn't see that the last time I yeah. saw this movie. So that's cool. <sighs> yep. Um. Yeah. Let's see. So for for this book, um, this is Michael Gammon's first time up to bat as Dumbledore, mm. which was pretty cool. I thought he did a yep. good job. I thought he did I, a great like, job in, yeah. in this first movie, and especially. I think something that he kind of loses in the later movies is, and, and it's a great transition from the old actor to this new actor. I, I think he bridged the gap perfectly with this movie. Yeah. He has kind of this very like mischievous, like personality about him. Like, like at the end when they're, uh, they're coming back from doing the whole time Turner thing and they're like walking through the hallway and they're yep. like, Sir, we did it. We just saved him. He's like, I no, you have didn't. no idea. Or, what you're yeah, talking or about. like, I don't know what you're talking about. Bye. Walk yep. down the stairs. <laughs> yep. And and yeah, like and, in the what, yeah in the book. Okay, sorry, you got it. No, I was just gonna say in the book, it's like a little bit different. Where he's like, yes, good. Like now, go back in there. Like we're all that good. Was, like we that saved. That was series. another was... thing that I that I noticed yeah. was that exact time. I was like, okay, this yeah. is way different. I right, like the book right. a lot better in that aspect, but still cool that he's yeah. You know, said, all right, I know what you did. Leave, don't yep. tell me. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, the second Dumbledore did a better job personifying, like, the Dumbledore of the books. Afterwards. Right. I, I think he brought in that mischievous energy and I'm on your side, but I have to play the game with, like, all of my peers. And yeah, he, yeah. Was, yep. I, I really enjoyed him. I, I thought like, nothing wrong with the first Dumbledore, but I thought the second one really brought the book one totally to totally another another scene that i thought that the movie maybe just uh, like elaborated a little bit more on maybe you can correct me but um when after they do the time turner and they're going to say buckbeak right yeah. and they run into the woods because they're all coming out to hide behind the pumpkins yeah uh, but then dumbledore takes them outside and's pointing up the hill he's like oh you see the strawberries over here yeah we planted those 100 years yes. ago and those those are something else you planted while they're just standing there with buckbeak in their hand right i was yeah. like i don't remember that in the book but that was such a cool scene to have like played out yeah i liked i liked that the movie kind of added that where it shows yeah. it it shows that dumbledore has Which kind like, of like yes this it's, out it's a plan extent. exactly yeah. exactly it's a master plan he's got and he did it on purpose to protect those kids from getting caught right yeah yes, yeah exactly so there's a couple new characters that we meet in this book uh we meet trelawney who is yes. the uh divination, divination instructor yeah. and <clears throat> this is kind of the first time where we really learn about divination and um she's kind of seen as this like crazy like doesn't know what she's talking about like seer kind of person uh, we, of course, find out later that she is the one who Dumbledore initially heard, like, the prophecy from, yeah. like, the Harry Potter prophecy. He heard it from Trelawney, and so he brings her, and she's been there the whole time. She just wasn't in the first two books, um, and he brought her in to keep her safe from Voldemort. So that, because like he didn't want anybody else getting to her. He's like, if you if you have the prophecy somewhere in your head, I want that. Like I don't want. Yeah, you need else to be here. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's why he's brought her in. But she's also this really like kooky kind of weird instructor. Um, but I don't know if you guys noticed, but everything she says actually comes true. But it's yeah. It just, it doesn't come true in the way that she is like perceiving it. Yep. So one of my favorites is the, uh, uh, she tells Parvati Patil, uh, beware of a red haired man, but she's in her vision. She's not actually seeing Parvati. She's seeing her twin sister who will have a terrible time with Ron at the ball next year. Mm. And so it's like, it's interesting. Cause she's like, Oh, you're going to have like this terrible time with, with a red haired man. And she's like, wait, why with Ron? Like what? Yeah. And like the book even says they like scoot apart, but it's, it's like her sister that looks exactly like her. And so I thought that was really cool. Um, and then she tells Neville, uh, your grandma isn't looking too good. Yeah. You should, like check up on her. But what she's referring to is the scene 
a couple chapters later of the bog art with Snape. Yep. And like yep. Snape is wearing like his grandma's clothes. Yes. It's like, oh, your grandma isn't looking too good. And, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and then this one's interesting. It's a little bit more hidden, I think. It, it took me a while to figure out what this was. But um, she says, on the 16th, the thing that you've been dreading will come to pass. Oh, and she says that the... to Lavender. Yes, the bunny rabbit. Yeah, and Lavender is like, oh, it's the 16th, and like my bunny died and all this stuff. And then Hermione comes by and she pokes all these holes yep. in the in the theory. And she's like, but the rabbit like actually died days ago. You're just yeah, hearing you about just it now. Yeah, just found out about it. Yeah. And like, like it, all this stuff. But you know what happens on the 16th is Sirius Black breaks into the school. Mm. And that's something that everybody's been dreading. Cause it's like been this big thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, Oh, it's kind of interesting just how, like how all of these little things come true, but not in the way that you're expecting them to, or at least not in the way that she is like actively predicting them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, well, I guess I'll ask real quick. Do, do you guys have any thoughts on true Lorne just like as a character? Um, um, I would say that the, Probably the movies make her look crazier than she is. <laughs> yeah, know? the movies, the movies did a great job of just but like showcasing. Just because she's an awesome, like it was a great actress. Like she did a good job of being a crazy divination teacher, yes. right? Right. Um, and and uh, Nova was telling me early or uh, last night, she actually heard a little piece of trivia that the actor that played True Lorne, those glasses that she had yeah. to wear. They were like magnifying glasses. That's oh, how they 200X, got like the, dude. Yeah, yeah like the I big can effect. imagine. And the actress herself could not see a thing. Like she wow. could not see anything. So in all of her scenes, she's like working blind. That's and crazy. There's like a scene of her trying to like pick up food and stuff, and she's like fumbling it all over the place. <laughs> it's she can't that was see. her like actually yeah. like not being able to see. I thought That's that was crazy. super funny. So then the next uh, character we meet that is a brand new character is Lupin. Uh, he becomes a key character in the series. Yes. And he's like probably in my top three yeah, favorite characters. Yeah, he's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. yeah, I love Lupin. Like he is so awesome. I think we see him again in the fifth book and then yep. from the fifth book to the end of the series. Yep. <clears throat> and... Uh, he is a werewolf, and being a werewolf, no one wanted anything to do with him. Uh, but Dumbledore made special accommodations for him um, just to, like, join the school when he was young. Like, Dumbledore Way planted... back when, yeah. Yeah, he, like, planted the Whomping Willow and, like, made the... And the, the... Shrieking House was his and... to transform mm -hmm. in. Yep. yep. Or the, whatever and, you call uh... that, Shrieking Track. Yeah, Jack. yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that, that whole thing was for him to have somewhere to turn into a wolf, uh, safely. Um, and then Dumbledore made further accommodations to him or, or for him to bring him in as a teacher at Hogwarts. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, Lupin talks about this later where he's like, you know, I, I felt really bad for deceiving Dumbledore about like the whole Animagus thing because he has done so much to help me like he is the one person who has like treated me like a human being and like actually tried to work within the confines of my like issue that I've had since I was a kid and you know when everybody else was so like quick to throw me out and be like oh no we're scared of you like go away He's like Dumbledore was the guy that was like actually trying to to help me. And in between being a student and coming in as a teacher, he's been like homeless and kind of like running around and like people don't really don't really want to like help him or anything or don't want to like they don't want anything to do with him. And so I just thought he was a cool character. I just thought it was like I, I think I think Rowling has a really good way of making you feel sorry for certain characters and just having them be the most lovable people. Yeah. Uh, like Harry Potter himself. Like you just feel so bad for Harry being like an orphan and just being treated so horribly by the Dursleys. And um, I don't know. It's just really, it, 
I, I like I like when she brings these kind of characters in who are outcasts and in, in every other respect and brings them into like this community. I think that's really cool. Yeah, one of the first scenes in both the book and the movie are them getting on the train and finding him asleep, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see him in the movie, he's just asleep in a corner, just passed out in a chair, right? Yeah. And it makes you think, like, oh, you know, he's probably either super tired or he's had a tough go of things or whatever else. And yeah. it turns out he's, like, this badass teacher. Right, exactly. And in the books, they explain, like, you know, his trunk was wrapped with twine yeah. to keep it closed. And, like, those were details I definitely missed in the movie. That, yeah. like, he did not have money, like, at, at all. He, he, yeah. he was struggling. So that was really yeah. sad. It's just, you know, a, a different form of, like, racism in a way that's in the wizarding world. Like, you've got right. what they consider mugbloods, and now you've got people who have yep. been... Yep. You no, know, inflicted with things that they didn't like choose for themselves. So it was just really sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And then and then we see that further um, in the next couple books with the uh, like the house elves and like how the yes. house elves are treated. Oh, oh that they... was really rough. Like from the beginning with the house yeah. elves, that yeah. was just, like, why is anyone okay with this? Right. Obviously, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I think she does a good job of putting putting those themes in the book without it feeling like preachy without yeah. it being like, this is going to be your lesson on classism yep. or whatever. Like it's, mm -hmm. she does it in the background and you definitely pick up on those themes and you definitely pick up on, uh, you know, how these people are treated and you're, she, she trusts her readers enough to come to the conclusion that this is bad you know what yeah. i mean she doesn't yeah. she doesn't need to shove it down your throat uh which i really appreciated yep amen nova <laughs> same <laughs> same okay so any other general thoughts before we get into some fun facts no i'm looking forward to the fun facts you have right now okay. i'm very excited yeah okay so this was this was really fun last week we um we went through a bunch of them and i think for me the reason why you know, I've kept these in the show. I, I was initially just going to do it for the first episode. But what I really like about these is, you know, having done it for the first episode and seeing how that first book was written with J.K. Rowling, like, pretty much being, like, borderline homeless with, you know, being a single mother, like, literally pushing her kid around in a stroller uh, in England and, like, trying to find little coffee houses and stuff that would let her sit for just a couple hours so that she could write her book. Yeah. I think it's really crazy to just see how far she came like throughout with, with, with each successive book, like how much more uh, like successful she got with each one. Mm -hmm. And so we saw in the last book where she was like, she was like, yeah, the first book didn't solve, like, all my money problems, but it was definitely, like, a very successful book. But I was still, like, you know, you know, borrowing money from family and, and stuff like that. And then with the second book, she was like, like, okay, like, I am making money now. Yeah. Like, now we have yeah. merchandise. Now we have people coming to me about movie deals and, like, this so cool crazy. that that happened on the second book, dude. Like, right. come on, yeah. man. Long That's before incredible. The movie started, yeah. The What's that? Done? They were. Okay. The books were well, done. Not, I don't think all of them. No, but she's, no, no, no. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. They, she was, she had just written the second book second when they were book starting when they the started the movie. movies. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and, it's like an immediate. It's just crazy because I feel like she was one of the first really big commercial fantasy like yeah, oh yeah what i mean oh, that, sure. that bridge yeah. that gap of like when i talk to some people who love to read but they don't read fantasy and they're like oh you like fantasy you know what i mean like it right. was a it bridged that divide of like it made it commercially palatable i yep. guess is the yep. best That's way, a to good, say good way to put it yeah yeah for sure and and the uh as far as the movies go the writer even mentioned i, I mentioned this on the last episode but the uh, the writer mentioned how hard it was to write the movies without knowing what the future books uh, were going to be. And he kept going to her like, I have to know how this ends so that I can write this thing. she would say, no, you She's can't. She's like, nope, I'm not telling you. And I think and, that's well, what makes the movie so good, dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah but to, what to I put emphasis like, on, you know, is like clues for like the later movies. Yeah, that are yeah. Movies and I feel like if like, you were to oh, know God. the entire story from start to finish by the time you started making a movie, it would ruin itself. Well, look there's at the just, Game of Thrones TV yeah, show. There's just no way. There's no way that you could like do that safely. I don't. I feel like right. that's not possible. You have to have some intrigue, some surprise. And if if you knew what was going on, you'd just melt it perfectly every time, and that would ruin it. Yeah, there might have been like a little too much foreshadowing. I could see that, but I also yeah. think like, I mean, I I kind of sympathize with the writer. Not that I've ever like been in that situation, but it's kind of like, yeah, I could see how if you don't know like what's going to happen in the future, you don't know what to like include in the earlier movies that will tie into the later ones. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I think he did the best with, with what he was given, but I yeah. think her, her worry was that if she told him the whole story, she's like, I know that I have gold. Like, I know that I have like literally a lifetime of never having to worry about money ever again. Yeah. And if I give somebody this entire story, like even if there's a 1% chance that this writer like goes and like tells everybody, she's like, It'll that happen. could ruin yeah. me. That could yeah, ruin and it, me. And it will totally. Yeah. That's, but I think that's to fair. To play devil's advocate, um, my husband and I are doing a rewatch of Lost right now. Have you ever watched Lost? Oh yeah. Okay. I haven't. We're doing a rewatch right now, and now we know. We know everything. You know what I mean? This is our first rewatch. We know how the story ends. We know, what do you call it? It's almost ruining it for us because oh, we're yeah. like, oh, they never explain this. This never comes back around. This was huge in this episode, but I know it's never going to get explained. So why should I care about watching it on a rewatch, you know? Yeah, and right. So I do think it can be important in a way to have a rough timeline of where you expect the story to start and end and right. if you want someone to put that on a big screen for you you need to have an ironclad nda that if they mess it up and tell people then they're gonna have really big consequences because right. i think it can negatively affect the story when you're not telling the writer of the movie what you plan on being the big reveals in the yeah. end so they can make That's more of an emphasis during the movies that's yeah. fair. That's totally fair. I would agree. I think my thinking is like, I would like to hope that like, you know, the movie getting picked up at the end of book two, right? And they say, listen, we want to, we want to make all these a movie. Every single book you write, let's make it a movie. And they ask what's going to happen to all of them. She says, I don't, I can't tell you that. I'm like, I'm, my hope is that it's more like of like, listen, if I tell you it'll ruin, you know, something like, I'll, I'll give you enough and I'll give you enough to where you can make this next movie in the next movie. Right. I'll give you enough to make mm. that movie. Then the next movie, I'll give you enough to make that movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were so wildly successful. Like there's, it, it didn't, it didn't go wrong anywhere. There was no, nobody did anything that ruined Harry Potter. Right. Right. Well, like, what if it she was, didn't it know. was, what if she didn't know how she wanted it to end it and she didn't want to lock herself in? Yeah, that's and that's another that, thing she could have done. But I but I feel like at the time she did know, but she like mm -hmm. Spencer said, she wasn't willing to give that to them because then it's yeah. not on her, it's on them. Right. She right. gives she gives away her right for that. But my hope is like she like just understands like here, you want to write the next movie? Here's the next movie. Let's write it. And right, then right, you right. want the fourth one? Here's the fourth movie. Let's write it. Instead of giving yeah. them movie one through eight or whatever it is like here's everything that happens figure yeah. out a movie for number three yeah you know and Some to be like this is gonna be an important scene like make sure you highlight like this yeah 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 she section and, of dialogue <laughs> yeah yeah and and to be fair she was working very closely with oh the, uh, totally with the writer yeah. for the movie so like i'm sure that he had i'm sure he had the things that he like needed to have but, yeah, um, and I think the writers were also like really <laughs> respectful of her, you know, because yeah. oh, the yeah. movies are incredible. They're all awesome. Like they're, they're all so incredible good. movies. Like the, yeah. there was no mess ups. There was no nothing that anybody was bummed out about. It was no. like they were the yeah. Harry Potter movies. You know, well, you know <laughs> like all I, them. I'm so excited for the the Harry Potter HBO series that's coming yeah. up. Yeah, you know. We don't have like a ton of info for it, but I'm like, man, now with everything that's been out with the like crimes of Grindelwald and all of yeah. the like fantastic beast lore and all of the Harry Potter books and all the Harry Potter movies, 
I'm like, now they can look at all of it and tell a story. Yes, yes, And so yes. I'm like, man, as long as they just stick to, like, one book per season and, like, tell that whole book in, like, the number of episodes, like, man, it's going to be it's going to be so good. I'm so excited. I really hope they don't screw it up. But HBO, HBO has a good track record with these things. So, um, okay, so I'm people, yeah, they'll be fine. <laughs> HBO will do as good a job as I think any streaming service can do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so I'm gonna rattle off these these fun yep. facts real yep, quick. Let's do it. Uh, so Rowling started to write Prisoner of Azkaban the day she finished Chamber of Secrets. Rowling said in 2004 that Prisoner of Azkaban was the best writing experience I ever had. Wow. I was in a very comfortable place writing number three. Immediate financial worries were over and press attention wasn't yet by any means excessive. Mm. And then my notes say Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban won several awards, including the 1999 Book List Editor's Choice Awards, uh, the 1999 Bram Stoker Award, for best work for young readers, the 1999 FCBG Children's Book Award, the 1999 Whitbread Book of the Year for Children's Books Award, and the 2000 Locust winner for best fantasy novel. Those are some like high accolades. Yeah. Like those those are some really really good awards to win. Um and then uh, Prisoner of Azkaban sold more than 68,000 copies in the UK. Oh, this is crazy. Okay, so Prisoner of Azkaban sold more than 68,000 copies in the UK within three days of publication, uh, which made it the fastest-selling British book at the time. Wow. Uh, the sales total by 2012 is said, said by The Guardian to be 3,377,906. million three hundred seventy-seven thousand nine hundred and six, And... In 2024, today in 2024, the worldwide sales sit at 65 million. Oh, holy crap. Oh. That's nuts, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. That is wild. <laughs> That's oh, insane. Man. And I was I was looking at a chart that had like all of them. Yeah. And all all of the books are at 65 million. Like every single one of them are at 65 it, million. I don't doubt it, I don't doubt it at all. And so it's like, you can just tell that people read the first book and had to buy the rest of them. Oh, Cause like, dude, it's, it's not like there's, there's not like a drop off. It's no, like no. 65 million all the way across. Yeah. Even, even, you know, I, I started reading them in 23. Right. And I read all of them. There's just yeah, no, yeah. you could start reading them tomorrow and you'll read all of them. That's just how yeah. it works. They're so addictive. Yeah. Um, this is pretty interesting. They couldn't print the U.S. hardcover editions fast enough, and they had to move the official U.S. Uh, publication <laughs> date up a full year. That's and crazy, dude. <laughs> instead, they had to get something out, though. So instead of selling like the official like hardcover yeah. book, they sold the advanced reader's copy, the ARC, that had a very basic cover. It just simply said... Like Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, <laughs> and they sold that to people, and it probably sold like hotcakes. People like, probably ate it up, and it's probably worth yeah. so much money right now, it's dude. So worth much money. So dude. much money right oh now. My God. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, the UK edition was released at the end. Oh, this is great. This is so yeah. funny. The UK edition was released at the unusually precise time of 3.45 p.m. so Whoa. as to avoid children skipping school in order to purchase the book. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Isn't that so funny? Like, that's so smart. Like, of course, by this point, it's like a big enough thing where yeah. kids are oh, going to skip school. It, yeah. <laughs> oh, so funny. I just, uh, uh, just for fun, I was like Googling, like, <laughs> what's the most expensive edition of Harry Potter, right? Like, what's the, yeah. what's the biggest one? And, uh, there's one that just popped up on Whitmore Rare Books. Uh, yeah. it's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It's, uh, 1998 edition that they're selling for $6,000. Oh my God. Wow. I don't know why. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say why it's special, but that's well, just it's probably like a first printing. Something, yeah. but still, that's yeah. crazy, dude. 
Gabe, did I tell you that I got a first edition, first printing of uh, the fifth book, Order of the Phoenix? You did. I remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah. 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 It's so crazy. <laughs> Dude, I, found I hope it. you didn't pay $5,000 for it. No, I paid fifteen dollars for it at a used bookstore. <laughs> nice, I'm, dude. I'm like, dude, dude, whoever brought this here had yeah, no idea. Like, you what don't they know had. what you have exactly. Yeah. You don't know what you have, dude. So wild. That's cool. Um, okay, so then some film stuff. Uh, the film debuted at number one at the box office and held that position for two weeks. It made wow. a total of. Seven hundred and ninety-six point seven million worldwide, which I should say is more than like double what most films nowadays are making. Yeah, and the made. budget was less than what films nowadays cost, yeah. and so that's like that's like with inflation, like a that's billion like, dollars, dude. If if not more, like a billion yeah. and a half, like with with inflation, with that movie. is yeah. some crazy crazy numbers. Stupid um, money. However, among all eight entries in the Harry Potter franchise, Prisoner of Azkaban grossed the lowest, yet among critics and fans, the film is often considered as the best in the franchise, mm. in large part due to uh, the director's stylistic influence. And so I'm really interested when we go when we watch uh, The Deathly Hallows Part yeah. 2, I can't wait to see what that made in the movie theaters because... I remember like my entire high school going and see it like people that yeah. would have laughed at you for being like into fantasy went and saw that movie. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to see what, what that is down the line. Yeah. Okay. So then this is interesting. Guillermo del Toro, Ooh. the guy who did like Pulp Fiction yeah. and all yeah. that was approached to direct but he had an he had envisioned a more Dick Dickensian version of the stories. What does that mean? Uh, like you know, like Twist? Oliver Twist. Yeah. Like darker, like oh, um, okay, okay. More like uh, Dickensian. Uh, I don't know how to explain it other than like Oliver Twist, like sad no, orphan uh, boy. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Sadder, darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And uh, and so I for, I just think that would have been I would love like a super dark and sad Harry Potter that would have been so great, uh, <laughs> but he was put off by the first two films which he found to be too bright and happy and full of light, mm. uh, which is saying something because I don't consider those movies necessarily yeah. to be bright and happy, um, but God that would have been so cool with Guillermo del Toro, uh, having like. He also did uh, Coraline, if you ever saw yep. that movie. Yep. Um, I'm sure he would have gone for something uh, along the same mood as that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this next part is kind of long, but it's amazing. Like, I really think it's worth reading. All right. Um, so they landed on this guy. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this exactly. It's a French name. Uh, Kouarin as the director. And as the first exercise with the actors who portray the central trio, uh, he assigned Radcliffe, uh, Rupert Grint, and Emma Watson to write an autobiographical essay about their character that they play in the movie. And it needed to be written in first person, uh, spanning birth to the discovery of the magical world, like their first wow. time learning about magic and including the character's emotional experience. So he assigns them yeah. this like essay to write about their character. And I think that every show should do this because nowadays there is so many shows where uh, like the people that played in The Witcher, Henry Cavill was like the only guy that read the books or like played yeah. the game. The rest of them were like, oh no, that's nerd stuff. It's like, but you're in this show. That yeah. means so much to people. And so I think it's read really- Read the source material. Yeah. Read the source material. Yeah. <laughs> For real. And so I think it's really cool that he's like, no, you need to like understand these characters. Mm -hmm. um, and so he did that. He had them write this assignment um and then he uh he recalls this is in quotes he's saying this emma's essay was 10 pages long daniel's was exactly two pages rupert who plays ron 
didn't deliver the essay at all. When I questioned why he didn't do it, he said, I'm Ron. Ron wouldn't do it. So I said, okay, you do understand your character. And that was that was the most important piece of acting work yeah, that we did dude. on The Prisoner of Azkaban because it was very clear that everything they put in those essays was going to be the pillars that they were going to hold on to for the rest of the process. Oh, and man. So I think cool. it shows. Like, I think it, it totally, totally. Like, all of these actors, like, perfectly, you know, if I if I have any gripes with the with the film or like any gripes with like oh they left this out and they left that out it's not the characters like i think they embodied harry ron yeah. and hermione so well um and yeah i just i just think that's that's super cool no that's awesome that's awesome mm -hmm. um so then last couple things uh the costumes and design were really interesting um for I was gonna say I, I noticed in the movie it was a lot of just like regular clothes. Like yeah, most so of that... the ending, like Hermione was wearing like jeans and a pink sweater. Harry was yeah. wearing, you know, jeans and this and Ron, whatever else. And that was like it for the majority of well, I, I should say the the end half of the of the episode or the movie. Right. Yeah, exactly. So basically what happened is this director went to uh everybody, but mostly the the main trio. Yeah. And he's like, you know, because in the first couple of movies, they have their collars yeah, like tied up to here tight. and their yep, ties they got the, and all that. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, that's not how they would be dressing, though. Like, if you yeah. were away from your parents and you you were like had to wear a uniform, but you could there's like wiggle room. Yep. He he went to the three of them and he's like, I want you to dress how you would dress if you didn't have to worry about your parents seeing you. Yeah. And so you notice like. That's Rupert cool. has his yeah. like he has his shirt open and the sleeves rolled up yep. and his tie yep. is like hung really low. Uh and then Emma yep. Watson and she's like all dressed up for the most part when she's wearing her yeah. uniform. And uh and like and then Daniel's kind of like he's got his collar like a little bit looser, but he's still wearing like his shirt and like you know what I mean? Yeah. Um but then the director went to JK Rowling and he says, in what situations would these kids be, like, wearing normal clothes? Like, are they always wearing the uniform? And she's like, no. She's like, they'd only be doing that during, like, the school day. Like, during during classes and stuff. But if it was, like, at night or if there was, like, a vacation or if they were going out to Hogsmeade or something. Okay. They would all be wearing, like, street clothes. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking of was the street yeah. clothes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so... um. So then he went around and he's like, I just want you to wear like whatever you whatever would wear. You would wear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you see Harry in like his black hoodie and like Emma in her like, she's got like a jacket on, but she's wearing like jeans and a sweatshirt or something, yep. you know? And, yep. and so it's kind of cool to see how, uh, how all of that, all of that worked. And then uh, Nova, when we were watching, um, when we were watching the movie last night, we were like, man, everybody's hair looks so good. Like it was yeah. such an upgrade from the yep. past couple of movies. Like the first one, like Daniel has like this bowl cut, and so yep. does so does Ron. And in but this the one, movie, like his hair is so bad. And why is it so bad in the next right? Week? Yeah, <laughs> it's like he's wearing a helmet. That it makes no sense. And I get that, like through every book. They're like, oh, he has this crazy hair that like can't be maintained or contained, whatever. But I think they did that well enough in this movie without yeah, having I... to have like a bowl cut. Yes. Yeah, the no, I, I thought the messiness was good. Yeah. And then there's that scene where like, you know, they're they're Hermione, Ron, and Harry are behind the pumpkin, and then Hermione and Harry are behind them in the woods, and Hermione's yeah, she's like, like, is that what, really my, hair what my hair looks like from behind? <laughs> and I was just cracking up. I'm like, dude, yeah, that's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. So then the last note I have, we already talked about this, uh, but it just said the increasing plot complexity uh, necessitated a looser adaptation of the book's finer plot lines and backstory. Mm. And, you know, we see this with like the Fidelius charm. Like that doesn't even get mentioned in this movie. Yeah, uh, that's the promise charm, right? Or the secret. Yeah, right? the secret okay. keeper. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That that doesn't like get mentioned at all in this no. movie. I can't. Re- it comes up at some point in the movies, I think, but I can't remember. It does when. in the books, this last book, but not the movie. Right. Right. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's all the that's all the fun facts I had. I was I was gonna watch an interview because she does like an interview for every like movie and and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was gonna watch that, but I was like, I have enough fun facts. I think those are all pretty interesting. Those are good. Yep. Yeah. So then we have Dumbledore's big plan, and we talked about this quite a bit last week with Lockhart being specifically chosen by Dumbledore to show Harry what happens when your ego gets too big. Like, what happens when you get a lot of fame really fast and how easily it is, or how easy it is to uh, to get a big head on your shoulders. Um, and there was a couple other, like, finer points to that, too. Um, but I think this book is by far, like, the, the most unconfirmable of, like, what could be like strongly considered Dumbledore's plan because a lot of it happens through Lupin um, or through like Sirius and Dumbledore does not know that Sirius is about to be a problem. Like he doesn't like, it's a, it's as much of a surprise to Dumbledore. Until the very end. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he, here's the thing. He knows from the beginning that Sirius is on the loose and coming after Harry, but in the year prior, like he wouldn't have been able to plan for that because it was just something that happened. Totally, um, so totally. He, yeah. So he has no way to like expect it or anything. Yeah, but it, but his planning for that is the end of this book and the movie. Yes, he he does like make a plan throughout the book, and okay. at the end is like, yeah, what if we had the culmination, do this like, time turner like, thing, and have yeah, go okay, back around okay, and, yeah, all right, all right. Um, but he, so he's, you know, like you just said, he's kind of adjusting his plan on the fly. Like he's kind of like figuring out what the threat is, where it's coming from, how it affects Harry and trying to figure it out as he goes. Um, so the main part of his plan for this year is to protect Harry from Sirius because he does not know that Sirius is innocent yet. He eventually figures yeah. it out, but he at the beginning, he does not know. Um, and so he takes full advantage of the protection offered by number four Privet Drive. And this is, you know, pretty big conjecture territory, but it's possible that he sent the Weasleys on vacation because they get that big, like, random winning yeah, of money. Yeah, and like, they go to Egypt and from? stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, and in the previous book, they had just gone to Egypt to visit their kid over there. So it's like, why go again the very next summer? Um, but they get like this big thing of gold. And I, I, th- in, in my head, it's like Dumbledore kind of nudged them like, yeah, we need to keep Harry at number four Privet Drive. So why don't you guys just go off to Egypt? We don't want any distractions of him running over to your house, uh, for the summer. Because, as we find out, uh, number four Privet Drive has some sort of protection from from evil entities mm. wanting to to harm Harry. Um, and so then we have the Ministry directly protecting Harry, like when he runs away and gets on the night bus. Yeah. And uh, see Fudge, you know, and Fudge is like, eh, eh, everything's fine, dude. <laughs> yeah. Harry's like, aren't you going to arrest me? He's like, yeah, he's nah. like, you just blew her up a little bit. It's fine. Yeah, we we like, got to take care of. He's like, but I literally did nothing wrong <laughs> last summer and you were about to expel me. He's like, ah, let bygones be bygones. Yeah. And he's like, okay, I guess. Yeah. Um, so then the other part of Dumbledore's big plan is to observe Harry's greatest fear. And this is done through the Bogart. Bogart, yep. Bogart and... Uh, and this is something that I, I had to find this out on somebody else's podcast on the uh, Through the Gryffindor podcast. Um, but Dumbledore does this same lesson with the Bogart in Crimes of Grindelwald. So oh, in the Fantastic I've never Beast seen movie, it, yeah. I haven't either. Yep. Um, but we, we see him do the same lesson. The same lesson so, with who? I, I don't know who he was okay. teaching it to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever class he was teaching. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but uh, I guarantee that he 
like showed Lupin this like way of teaching. Yeah, fair. If it's if it's the same lesson, like I I think it's fair to say that he had he had Lupin do it for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. And you could argue what that reason is, but it makes sense that he's trying to see what Harry's greatest fear is. Yeah. Um because if Harry's greatest fear is not being liked, then that goes back to the lesson that he did last year with Lockhart mm. where he's worried about Harry's ego or maybe he's trying to figure out like is what what Harry needs to do at the end of the series he needs to walk into this forest pure of heart know that he's going to die and be okay with it and Her I, I think that Harry's greatest fear would inform Dumbledore on if he would be able to do that or not gotcha gotcha um, so I, I think you know, maybe like a slightly, like maybe a little bit of a reach, but I think it's fair. Um, and then I think this is definitely part of the plan is to teach him Expecto Patronum. We mm. see Harry use this spell uh, all throughout the next few books. Yep, a um, couple times this book too. Yeah, and Dumbledore's whole thing is if the Dementors eat Harry's soul or if they damage it, Harry will not be able to do what he does at the end of the book because he has to have a complete and yeah. whole yeah. unmarked soul. Um, totally. And so he, he needs Harry to learn Expecto Patronum. Yeah. Um, and then the last part, and I think this is the part of it that's the most concrete, is the value of someone's soul and their innocence. And we talked about Lupin, how he's like kind of an outcast, he's unwanted, yet he has a very pure soul. And I think that he trusts, I think he trusts Harry to see that. And that may be like a fraction of why Lupin is the uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher that year. When Lupin tells Harry about the Dementor's kiss, Harry says that Sirius Black deserves it, because at the time he thinks he's guilty. Yeah. Lupin asks, does anyone truly deserve it? And Harry initially says yes and worse. But by the end of the book, Harry has done a complete 180 and refuses to kill Peter, the person that he should really yes. want to be dead. Yes. So you can see this like character arc. Um, and he is the uh, the person that is single-handedly responsible for the death of his parents. Yeah. And he's willing to spare him uh, because he sees through all of this he sees that he has misjudged Sirius and maybe even to some yep. extent extent misjudged Lupin yep and he's like maybe I need to there's a there's a scene in the in, right there in the books too where even Lupin says like Harry you the only one that can can decide this you were the only right. one that can judge and I thought that because that didn't happen in the movie the movie was quick done yes. with that stuff really fast but in the book it was very much more meaningful and he said like listen, like, this is, like, we get it. Me and Sirius, this is your choice. You're the only one that can decide if this person dies or not. Right. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, Nova says, I love Lupin. I like how Lupin and Sirius both play like they are evil in the tree before they tell yeah. what really happened. That it's was so much twist. worse in the movie. It's so, yeah. they, uh, in the movie, I was like, are they ever going to be good? Like, what's happening? Yeah. I don't know. Right. But in the book, it's like they were quick to like tell him. But in the movie, you're yes. just like, but everybody's like, what? when are they going to change, dude? And then all of a sudden, yeah. they're like, oh, okay. All right. Never mind. This is what's going on. I was like, dang, scared yeah. me for a second. Yeah. Yeah. That, they they played it really 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 well both great yeah. actors yeah it, yes it, it was also funny nova was telling me last night that she's got the the hots for uh serious oh she's who doesn't dude <laughs> right? really? okay, my, even my wife just watching it was like holy yeah. crap he's a bad boy yeah. everybody yeah. likes a bad boy dude yeah oh, i thought <laughs> lupin was the one i wanted to like hug him and say it's gonna be okay it's okay you're a werewolf <laughs> yeah it's okay it's gonna be yeah okay. everything's fine everything's fine, fine. it's okay because uh, the thing i noticed too is that in like in the book you don't see this but in the movie you do like sirius is covered in tattoos yeah like, he's got tattoos <laughs> yeah. on all his fingers and his chest and oh, stuff yeah. and then he was like i like the tattoos those are, those are <laughs> yeah. nice like sure you do yeah what a surprise tattoos what are a hot surprise. yeah that's so funny <laughs> that's cool. 
Yep. I remember when I first watched, my stomach dropped with Lupin possibly being evil. Yeah. 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 That was what. So I I read the the books it's... for the first time. Um, sorry, real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, That's now, exactly how my wife. Now that I'm like. <laughs> I'm like seriously. That's that's yep, great. that's exactly what Leah said, dude. But I also uh, get what you're saying, like, because when when Lupin, like, you know, because Lupin walks in there, right, and he's like, Expelliarmus, you know, get rid of the wands, blah blah blah, and then all of yeah. a sudden he's like serious, and they talk sh for just a second, and then they're like, oh, come here, mate, and they give each other a hug, and you're like, what the, f dude, what the, what is going on? Everybody's freaking out, like, why are you hugging yeah. him? Finally, learn like, mm, you, what yeah. you think is happening is not actually happening. Right, yeah. exactly. I loved I think I think the movie did a not the movie did a good job of like visually showing that scene. Yeah. But I think the book Oh the book like, yeah, totally. Totally. Like I, I was just like rereading the ending this morning and I'm like, man, the book <laughs> gives you so much more context. Yes. Uh, yes. Look what it's no <laughs> that's awesome. Dude. I think I think I said last night that I have a thing for a man accused of murder and has done time. <laughs> I think Nova's gonna it's be so on awesome. show, um, so awesome. Love After Lockup. She's gonna be like, yeah, Love After Lockup. Lock yeah, <laughs> he's a good. You, Nova, you and you and Leah would I get along so well. I, I you guys would be him. best friends. I can it's feel high. it in my soul. Yeah. That's great. That's great. <sighs> so yeah, then the the last little part of this is that. Dumbledore teaches the trio this lesson of, you know, the value of someone's soul and their innocence um, through the trial of Buckbeak. And it shows them, he's showing them the situation where an innocent party is going to be punished by murder, which is a great opportunity for Harry to learn the lesson of innocence and then carry that on, uh, you know, further into the story when he's seeing like Sirius and, and this whole thing take place he uh H harry later asked lupin like what difference did any of this make and he said it made all the difference in the world mm, you uncovered yeah. a terrible truth and saved an innocent yes. man's yeah. fate um and and dumbledore even says like when he's sending him back in time he's like you could save two innocent lives if you if you do this and so it's kind of like i don't know it's just like this good it's good like lesson for them um and uh i wrote down uh saving innocent lives is more important than punishing guilty ones which rings so true when we see harry walk into the forest uh later on in the series not to kill and punish voldemort mm. but to give himself up as a sacrifice yeah this lesson that he's learning right here that it's more important, like instead of instead of punishing Peter Pettigrew, who certainly deserves it, nobody is questioning that. Yeah. But it's better to, um, because because he has he has the option, right? He's he's sitting that there in a fork in the road where he could either try to go help Sirius with Lupin turning into a wolf, or he could chase after um, Peter Pettigrew. And he decides that it's better to, like, save this innocent person and, like, protect him than go and, like, try to convict or or seek justice on this person that deserves it. And at the end of the series, we, we see that where he, he has to go into that forest knowing I am going to die and I'm not going to kill Voldemort. Mm. Like, I, I know that... I, I have to do this in a way where I am not going to attack him. I'm just going to die. And it's it's crazy. It's crazy how far through the series this this lesson reaches. It makes me think of like, you know, when the divinations teacher is talking about like the things that she sees and all of that. Um, and I think I can't remember what part of the book where they say, um, you may know like this is going to happen, but maybe that's what's meant to happen to to gain you your final end goal. Yeah. And I thought that was really powerful in the sense that like, okay, you may think you're losing right now, but it may be like the key factor in you winning in the overall war. 
Yeah. Um, and it felt like that was that was the moment in this book where you really saw that. Like, okay, you're letting Peter go, but it may be to your benefit later. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, because he even mentions, um, you know, we, we can go into like our, our favorite moments and stuff now. Uh, Dumbledore mentions, if I have it here somewhere, uh, Dumbledore says, you did a very noble thing saving Pettigrew. He's in your debt. You have sent a deputy Ooh, yes. back to Voldemort yes. who owes Within his life death. to you. That's yes. right. I remember that. That was that was huge. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, oh, holy crap, that happens. Dude, like we, yeah. we see this pay off yeah. at the end of yeah. the series. Yeah. I, I can't remember if Peter's part was in the movies or not, but certainly in the books. Uh part it of it pays, was in the it movies. It pays yeah. dividends. Okay. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's that's really cool that something set up now is paid off at the very end of of Deathly Hallows. I think that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um. So Sam and I did something kind of cool last week, um, and we were like, maybe we should do this more often. We talked about the book, and we just kind of like skimmed the notes. <laughs> okay. We didn't really like refer to them at all, and we had a great discussion. Um, so I'd like to open it up to you guys on, do you have any like favorite quotes that come to mind or any like favorite moments? I have something I really want to ask you guys because like, yeah. obviously I've watched the movies, so it wouldn't be like ruining anything for me or spoiling anything. Um, sure. I have never understood the Snape explanation in the end of why like he has never really been like out to get Harry. Oh, the, really? I was, never... I was just explaining that to Leah, dude. Oh, nice. And like, I understand like the sense of he loved Lily and whatnot. And, but it doesn't, the movies did not explain enough to me as why he treated Harry so terribly leading up to that reveal. So can I elaborate yes. on that? Please. The way that I understand it is that like, there was a pro Snape, of course, like you said, loved Lily. He was in love with her since he saw her back when uh, James and them and all were in Hogwarts, all friends, and they didn't like Snape because he was a weirdo, he's an outcast, blah blah blah. Um, but the way that I went last time I read the books through, he, there was a promise made either between I can't remember who somebody and Snape. It was either Dumbledore and Snape or James and Snape or somebody. But the promise was to like, you know, always like look out for Harry. And even though Snape doesn't like Harry, yeah. in all the books we find times where he is working for his benefit, right? Like he yeah. might he, he can't stand on the side of him, but no matter what, he's gonna protect him. Like yeah. when he was flying in Quidditch and he was counteracting the spell that was making him go crazy and he was chanting, like yeah. he was protecting Harry, right? Yeah. Uh, and we I don't know. I just so I have a weird go ahead, go ahead. I Snape is struggling with his hate for James Potter, uh, and his who is love basically for Lily, his right? bully. Yeah, well, his yeah, Sorry. his love for Lily. He the the two things like equally conflict because James was, and we'll we'll find out. I think in the next couple books, yeah, that James was like literally he was Snape's a bully. bully. Yeah, yeah, he was like, a jerk. He, yeah, yeah, he was like he was like not kind to Snape, and like even. Like I would go so far as to say, like unwarranted. Like, yeah. like it was, it was like picking on the nerd kid in class. Like is basically yep. what it was like. Yep. Really mean. And so yeah, and so Snape, Snape has like this disdain for James Potter, and he sees, and and maybe unrightfully so, he sees a lot of James Potter in Harry. Um, but like many people mention. Harry also has Lily's eyes. So whenever yeah. Snape sees Harry, he also sees like a little piece of Lily. So he can't fully allow himself to just let bad things happen to Harry. Yeah. He's, he's got this like frustration with him and like this desire to like bring him down a peg, but mm -hmm. he's also like, no, I can't let him die. Like, I, it's it's like yeah. this knee jerk reaction doesn't, on both doesn't, sides because Dumbledore has known this right the entire time, yeah. And doesn't Snape and Dumbledore come to an agreement 
towards the end of like the last couple of books, right? Where Snape does yes. something that's crazy. I won't say right now, but I feel like that just goes to say like, like even though Snape was so like maybe like off of what was actually happening or just wasn't, or maybe his ideals weren't set up with mine, I guess. Right, but I feel yeah. like at towards the end, like Snape was doing something for the person that he loved for maybe somebody else he respected. Uh, and yep. it, and it was ultimately like a good thing. He was trying right. to be good, yeah. even though it always looked like he wasn't in the end. He yep. was trying to, trying to be a good person. Yeah. Cause that's what I was trying to explain to Leah. Cause he's like, Oh yeah, he's bad. And I was like, uh, he is not he exactly. Is. Yeah. Not. Yeah. He is bad, but he's not like he, in the yeah. end, he's not bad. Father like, like he like he loved like i was trying to explain she's not gonna watch these movies so i was just right give, i'm just feeding it to her right everything i yeah. can think of yeah yeah so i was just trying to explain like no he's not actually bad like he's got issues and there's been things done to him and there's been you know stuff that's popped up but like i don't think in the end that he's a bad person at all like i right. think he was trying to do what what either dumbledore or or lily would have wanted for certain situations i guess i don't yeah. know while while dealing with this while this dealing other with side an of overwhelming side of like hatred and like you know yeah does that does that answer your question sam i mean it does it just brings up more for me where it's like all right so <laughs> sins of the father on the son you know what i mean it, it's, exactly but at yeah, the same time like if he was like maliciously bullied constantly like i could i could see that moral confliction that he's yeah. struggling with so like and especially I, I think get it i i think <laughs> here here's the thing too i think that if harry didn't have so many of the qualities that his father has then been different yeah yeah snape would be able to separate them Dif differentiate be, be, but yeah imagine like as the reader we know where harry's heart is we know that he's not trying to be like this egotistical like ba kind of guy yeah but from snape's point of view who only sees him in like classes and in passing he's seeing all these things that harry's doing and he's coming to his own conclusions mm -hmm. which again doesn't make it right it doesn't make it okay to bully children <laughs> yeah. but yeah. <laughs> i can understand that he's not seeing all the behind the scenes stuff and we see that happen in this book you know bring it back to prisoner of azkaban where he comes into the shrieking shack and he's like i know what's going on like you guys are in league and everyone's trying to tell him like no you missed like a big part of this and he's like no i saw i, I saw what i needed to see and it's like no you're just you're just misinformed like ah and so that's kind of like how that's kind of like snape's biggest problem is he's always like super misinformed on everything interesting yeah. okay yep uh any other like favorite moments or can i can i read a quote real quick go ahead yeah i love uh <laughs> i love at the beginning when saint marge or uh saint marge uh aunt, aunt marge is coming to visit them and they're telling oh, her yeah. about <laughs> saint saint brutus's saint Bruno's academy or brutus's yeah, yeah. St. Brutus's Secure Center for Incurably Criminal Little Boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought that was so funny. I'm like, why would you want someone to think that your kid is going to They have to such this? a weird, like, weird derived thought process on how people should think Harry is. It's just so I know, weird. right? It's, I, love, I love this moment where she, like, turns to him and she goes... Do they use the cane yeah. on you, boy? He's like, oh yes, yeah, several, several times, all, all the we time. Yes, let they use, yeah. use it harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for he's real. Like, he's like, yes, all the time. And she says, good. I won't stand for this namby pamby <laughs> nonsense about not yeah. hitting people who deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what? Well, it's really funny because I feel like we're similar. We're close in age, right? I'm 34. Mm -hmm. You guys are 32. Close to 34. I'm almost 30. Yeah, coming up on 30. Couple of years. I had a call from my son's camp the other day, and my son is <laughs> he's hyperactive. I love my son, but like he's like me, me. his father both have ADD, yeah. you know, his father had ADHD, you know, like yeah. when he was it was really bad. And I was making a joke at work because I was trying to, you know, lighten the fact that I'm dealing with like something. Yeah. 
difficult. And I made a joke that was like, you know, if this had happened to me with my father, you know, like I wouldn't have been able to sit down for a week. And like the joke was <laughs> that like back then, you know, that was acceptable. And yeah. nowadays, like, Same. you know, no, it's not, that's not what we do. We find every other means, you know, yeah. possible, whatever. Um, so I thought it was really funny <laughs> in the context of that with the caning and whatnot. And I'm like, well, what like, yeah, that would never happen today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that it was even included because, you know, in today's day, like, no. Yeah. That's how we do. Yeah. I remember my day. parents talking about school and they were like, yeah, they used to have these, these paddles with holes in them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd get spanked, dude, if you yep. were doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I found the perfect punishment for my son where he hates writing. So I was like, you're going to write, I'm sorry. There you go. Lives. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He that's lost right. His, yeah. his mind. He lost his mind. And it ended up being like, okay, this is new insight for me. Like, this is going to be like you're yeah. holding above your head. <laughs> yeah. punishment. But how different is it from like what I grew up with? Yeah. You know, right. like, no, that was not the threat. Like when yep. I was yeah. his age. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But so to hear them saying like St. Brutus is like they're caning you at school. I'm like, oh, You're okay. like, geez, yeah, yeah, gnarly. Yep, yep. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. I so when I was watching the movie last night, the uh, so you know when he when he meets the the minister of magic and he's like, oh, come in here, and he like brings him into like this. Uh, oh, the first or time, and they got that weird yeah. hunched over dude that's like, here, you want yes. this? Yeah, dude, this I. I was, was laughing creepy. so hard at that guy. He was so funny though. Like yeah, everything he was. He was. like like the yeah. the minister, like he was talking with Harry and the bald guy was just doing he, like, weird up, stuff in the background. And then he like shuts down really fast. Yeah. There's one thing he said, he's like, I can't remember what it was, but I literally just watched it and he was like sitting there and then he like perks up, like, oh, can I do this? And then yeah. he says to him, and shuts. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, exactly. I loved when he like uh like harry's like sitting down and he's like do you want anything to eat and the minister says that and then the bald guy comes over and he yeah. lifts up this tray and it's literally <laughs> just a piece of bread like cut in half yeah. and then like whole potatoes yeah <laughs> just yep. like yep. just like not cooked just like and then he <laughs> yeah and then he offers him like the last one i think he offers him in the movies the pea soup and he was just told don't eat the pea soup and he's like nope i'm yeah. good thank yeah. you no i'm oh good my god is so fun i was laughing so hard i was like this guy is a character like he is so so funny um nova says anytime draco gets hurt wait does she like it when anytime draco yeah. gets hurt okay good yeah, yeah. Cause I do too <laughs> yeah dude, very much when... my most exciting moments of this movie was when draco gets his ass handed to him by hermione and yep. yeah. I think a couple and other Harry. times. And Harry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Harry, like, or uh, Hermione, like, decks and Hermione him. socks him in the face, dude. It's, I would just, yeah. I just sat there just smiling to myself. I'm like, yep. good job, so girl. Good. You yep. nailed it. I mean, he's gloating over the fact that he's getting bird killed. I mean, like, I want nothing to do with you. Get get yeah. away from my book. Get away from my screen. Like, yeah. you're gloating over what was I watching? Or, or no, the will of the many. You know how we're like anytime the main character got a problem, he was like, "No, like that's life. It doesn't matter if it's fair. Like you need to figure out how to deal with this situation." Yeah. That's yeah. kind of how I felt during this book, where I'm like, "All right, this isn't fair. Malfoy is his daddy to like solve all of his problems." Blah 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 blah. blah. No, like so work around this. What can you do to make that not be? something helpful to him but to actually be detrimental to him so right the will of the many has changed my thinking in a lot of way with books where it's like okay it doesn't matter that it's not fair like right what, what can you do that's yeah. all that matters what can yeah. you do yeah yeah for real the, yeah he has to constantly try to figure a way um figure out a way of like outsmarting uh really both the Malfoys like in the in the last book when he hands him the uh the sock in the in the journal and he like throws it at his elf and it's like okay well that was a way of outsmarting him another moment that I really loved was um it didn't show it in the movie which I was kind of bummed about but 
they are leaving uh, King's Cross Station and Mrs. Weasley is saying goodbye to all of her kids. And she's like hugging and kissing all of them like once. And then she comes back around to hug Harry a second time. Yeah. And I'm just like, I just love the, the way. Oh, they're awesome, dude. They, like, Harry's I... part of their family. They just, they soak him up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The books do such a better job of showing everyone in the family's love for Harry than the movies ever did. I yeah. didn't right. realize um, George and Fred actually really liked Harry as much yeah. as they did. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't just a, like, oh, he's Harry Potter and our brother's best friends with him until I read the books. And I was like, oh, no, this whole family actually very much cares about him. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, so much. Even And even in the movies, you can tell the first time that that Ron's mom comes around. She's just like dawdling him. Like, come here. Yeah. Like yeah. kisses him on the cheek. And like, are you okay? Are you okay? No. Are yeah. you okay, Harry? Right. It's like, yes, I'm fine. You know, they take really good care mom, of him. Yeah. As a mom, I'd like to think like, that's how I would treat yeah. like my son's friend. Who's like, totally. an I'd be like, totally. no, like, come on. I'm like, yeah, I'm absolutely. Yes. I, I think no. that's exactly what it is. Right. It's yeah. just, you, it's just a love for people. You're like, no, this person needs help. I'll help them. Like, yeah, there's no question hard, about right? it. Yeah. Very heartwarming. Any other favorite moments from you guys? I think that my favorite moment was the difference in the movies from, the, it was just the weirdest, I guess, maybe not favorite, but weirdest moment where they, the full fireball thing. It's like, why, yeah. why was that changed so much? Why did that have to be so different? But it was yeah. completely different. <laughs> yeah. In the book, he got the fireball seven chapters ago, right? And in the movie, he got it at the very end for like 10 seconds. And it had no yeah. part to the plot line. No part to the plot line, no right? Whatsoever. And when he got it in the book, they're like, he gets it from Sirius. And, like, they figure out it's Sirius. And McGonagall and whoever, Filch is like, no, we need to check it for, for charms. Like, you can't have it. We're taking it from you. And Harry's like, oh, my God, we're going to lose this championship, blah, 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 blah. He finally gets it back, and they do the thing, and they win. Awesome. But in the movie, he just gets it at the end. Like, oh, cool. All right. This is cool. And and Cole, Cole, he's like the captain of the Gryffindor or, team. Or Kent. Oliver yeah. Wood. Oliver, yeah. Wood. yeah. Oh, sorry, Oliver yeah. Wood. He is much more of a complicated, complex character in the books. He is yeah. so yeah. like, I don't really care about anything but winning these games. Yeah. Totally, totally. Very Dude. different from how he's portrayed in the movie. Very he's different. Speaking of which, there's this great quote by him in the book. Um, it's when they when they take uh, yep. they take Harry's broom away, and McGonagall is like, "Well, I took his broom because like it could have like kicked him off. Like, what if something happened and he was way up in the air?" And uh, Wood goes and talks to her to try to get the broom back so that Harry can play. And McGonagall got all mad, and we don't know why. And he says. I only said I didn't care if the broom threw you off as long as you caught the snitch. By her reaction, you'd think I'd said something terrible. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was great. I do, I do like the Quidditch in this book quite a lot. I think it's some of the like the most amount of Quidditch we get in a single book. Um, because we get him, we get them practicing, and then we get him playing uh, Hufflepuff against like Cedric. Yeah, and then we get like another practice session, and all all while dealing with the Dementors and whatnot. Um, and then we get a a, a game against Slytherin. In the movie, that's because in the in the movie, there's two games, right? Yeah, in the, well, no, in the movie, there's only the one game against oh, Hufflepuff. Yeah, but where, in the uh, book, there's the two. There's one against yes. this, and then they win the cup in the next book. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, not and, in further in the book, not the next book. Right. Yeah. Like they yeah. they win the Quidditch Cup in this book, but it's just not shown in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let me see. I'm trying to find my notes on the on the Slytherin one, but while I'm scrolling by it, I have a I have a quote from Hagrid. That's like uh, <laughs> the whole quote is: "Some people can be a bit stupid about their pets." Behind him, Buckbeak spit a few ferret bones onto Hagrid's pillow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh. Um, yeah, okay, so the game against Slytherin was amazing. So Slytherin, this whole game, are cheating. They keep cheating, and, like, the 
the the referee is calling them out on it and so they keep getting like penalties but they don't really care as long as they can possibly get like one move in that will get them yeah. to the end of the game um and there's this moment where alicia has the quaffle and they make up like this border like this whole wall that will stop her and they're afraid of harry's broom because he moves so fast now yep and so he gets on this broom and like lays down flat oh and yep flies at this wall and they're like oh my god and they all split apart and alicia is right behind him who has the quaffle and she's able to get right through the goal I'm like, man, that is what I'm yeah. here for. Yep. Like, oh, yep. that's so sick. Um, I love that so much. And then after after she scores that, uh, he turns around to see that Malfoy is diving for the snitch. And so the book says that Harry lays parallel with his parallel, broom, like yes. completely with his oh, broom. So sick. And so I picture like his legs out, like, just like holding like a, on to it. I picture like a sonic boom, dude. Like he's breaking yes. the sound barrier, just freaking going so fast. Right? Oh, it's so it's yeah. so cool. Like I love so this good. idea of him just like, just like flying yep. forward. And then at the last moment, he takes his hands off the broom and, and he yeah. pushes Malfoy <laughs> yeah. out of the way and grabs so the cool, snitch. Dude. I'm like, man. That was awesome. That's what and Quidditch like, is all about. Right that's there, what man. it's all about. That's what and it's Quidditch like, played for. dude, they they win the cup and the crowd just goes yep. crazy. Yep. Like, oh man, I I felt it in that chapter. Yeah. I was like, I feel the like hype for the sport for sure. For real. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to get to uh to some of the games that happen later because they were awesome they're so yep. cool what's uh what is book number four is, is that is five the goblet books? of fire okay four is the goblet of fire okay yes I'm, excited nice. about. I'm very excited about yeah goblet me, of me fire. too that's me probably too my favorite movie i think is goblet that's of fire. that's the movie i've seen the most is the goblet yeah. of fire yeah Same. yeah um the cool move that he did in the game with uh hufflepuff was that he so he's flying to go catch the snitch, but the Dementors show up and start to like mess with his mind. Oh, are you talking about like the where he flips back? And... Maybe. Well, so in this one, the one that I'm thinking of is he's like riding the Dementors show up. He starts to get all like fuzzy mm -hmm. in the head, and he casts his Patronus and then grabs the snitch. Oh yeah, yeah. way different from the movie. I was thinking of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one was uh that one was super cool. Yeah, I was I was bummed that the movie the movie skipped a lot of the Quidditch matches. Like we we really just got the the Hufflepuff one, which was cool. Like I like that scene. But um we learned that Nox is the spell that turns off Lumos. I just thought that was an interesting little uh piece of info cuz I would have thought that it would have just been like Lumos, Lumos to like turn it off. But it's a it's a completely different spell to like turn out the light. Um, but there is a scene, there is a scene in the movie where, so do you guys remember the scene where Harry is walking through the corridors at night and everything is like super dark, and he's looking at the map and all he has is like his light, and he's like walking through and walking through, and he sees like Peter or Peter Pettigrew go by him. And he's like, "What's that?" And he's like trying to figure that out, and then he sees Snape coming down the corner. And he's like, oh my god, and he turns out his light. And then the next thing that happens is Snape turns off his turns on his light and he's like right in front of Harry. Oh man, that was such a great, like I loved what they did with lighting and intensity. Like I just I liked that scene a lot. And I liked the whole um it happened both in the movie and in the book, where you know, he calls Lupin in to look at the map. And Lupin's like, no, this is definitely like a Zonko's product. Like, this isn't even. There, well, he, there's no dark. He doesn't magic call Lupin in, this. in. Lupin shows up, at least in the movie, oh, okay. anyways. He just yeah, walks yeah. up behind Snape and then, and then basically he saves. He saves Snape. Harry. Yeah, he saves yeah. Harry from Snape. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, he's like, oh no, like... this just looks like a Zonko's product. I don't. This is just a piece of paper. And then right. later, of course, we find out that it's not. Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say that Nova too. I. 
I wasn't Spencer doesn't have an iPhone, so he'll never understand about this, but uh, I know he's the reason our group chat is great. Yeah, it's so bad, exactly. <laughs> Because you can say you can literally say "Hey Siri, Lumos," and it'll turn your flashlight on. Then you can say "Hey Siri, Knox," and it'll turn your flashlight off. Oh wow! Lumos That's and cool. Knox are identified by <laughs> iPhone as on and off of your flashlight, your torch. That's it does cool. not surprise me that Gabe and I are iPhone users, and Spencer. <laughs> no, and yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't I it should not. I me refuse. At all. I refuse. Android works so well with like my computer and everything. Yeah, he's if just can, a, he's just a couple years behind the, the just a couple years behind the thing. He'll he'll get there eventually. He'll be there <laughs> okay. at some point. Okay. I doubt it. Okay, so let's let's move on to the shrieking sh- shrieking. That's such a hard phrase to say. The shrieking shack phase of the book um we talked about this a lot so i won't go through everything but uh there's a couple quotes that i really really loved uh both from the movie and the book because i think they both had them except for maybe one of these but i just loved the intensity of sirius when especially in the movie he's like I would have died before betraying my friends. Like just this ultimate like frustration and like taking his anger out on, uh, out on Peter Pettigrew, uh, just calling him out for being just the most spineless little weasel rat he's ever seen. Um, I just love the, I love the intensity of, I would have died before betraying my friends. And then I love when Peter, He's turned into human form and he goes over to Ron and he's like, you wouldn't let them harm me, right, Ron? I was your rat. I was your pet. And I think it's Lupin or maybe it's Sirius that says this, that uh, they're like, "Um, if you were if you were a better rat than a human, that's not much to boast about, Peter. (laughs) That was great. And then I actually have the uh, I have the audio for this one, so I'll bring I'll bring that up. This is another one of those like I would have died rather been rather than betraying my friends. Um, so I'll share that real real quick because I think uh, this is excellent the way it's done in the uh, in the audio book. You'd been passing information to him for a year before Lillian James died. You were his spy. He, he was taking over everywhere, gasped Pettigrew. But, but what was there to be gained by refusing him? What was there to be gained by fighting the most evil wizard who has ever existed, said Black with a terrible fury in his face. Only innocent lives, Peter. You don't understand, whined Pettigrew. He would have killed me, Sirius. Then you should have died, roared Black. Died rather than betray your friends, as we would have done for you. Black and Lupin stood shoulder to shoulder, wands raised. Oh, it's so good. I love that. Then you should have died. Like, oh, it's like, it's just this moment where it's like, you see the difference between Sirius Lupin and, or Sirius and Lupin and Peter Pettigrew, where it's like they, like if they were faced with the ultimatum that Voldemort is giving them, they would have rather just sacrificed themselves and died where peter's like what i didn't have any options left he was gonna kill me and Sirius like then you should have died like oh i love oh it's such a good moment i I don't know if you guys care about it as much as i know it's like a big scene yeah yeah Yeah. that we read (laughs) where it's like all right you put your singular life above like the life of like the collective the community yeah. And how am I supposed to feel bad for you? You you chose this in the end. You you chose it. You said my life is worth more than right. this huge group of people. So go away. Yeah, so it's, go away. it's yeah. what it's what proved that uh, that Remus and and Sirius were innocent to me. That line. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. And then I love both in the movie and in the book where Sirius is asking Harry to come live with him. Uh, this is such a heartwarming moment, and especially in the movie, you get that that view of the castle and them like walking up to the but hill. They cut him off. They cut him off. I he's, know. He's saying, "Like, yeah. you want me to come live with you?" And Sirius thinks he's like being like, "What do you mean, crazy? Like, I would right. never come live with you." But in the books, he says, "Like, no, I would love to come live live with you over the Dursleys." Why right. did they change that? 
I don't know. I was like, ah, that was such a good a good moment where like initially Sirius is like, oh, you don't have to. But Harry's like, oh, no, I would love to. Sirius's um, first thought with all of this was like, Harry, come live with me. I yeah. mean, I didn't like that we kind of cut it out, basically. Yeah. It is pretty wild to say all that, like right after everything that happened in the Shrieking Shack. Like maybe give it like a couple yeah. days and being like, Hey, like if you want to, like, <laughs> yeah, we we almost just killed Peter Pettigrew. Want to come live with me? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh shit. <laughs> um, but I did I did love the the quote from the movie because I don't think that it's in the book. Um, I mean both 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 scenes are good for their own reasons, but I love the visual of the movie. And they're they're like walking up and they see the castle and Sirius says, "It's beautiful, isn't it?" I'll never forget the first time I walked through those doors. It'll be nice to do it again as a free man. And then in the book, he's got like the awkward. Uh, and, and then I think after that, he asks him to move in with him. Uh, but then in the book, it's. Uh, I just love the awkwardness that Sirius has where he's fully expecting Harry to be like, you're crazy. Get away from me. And he's like, I just thought. Like, if you wanted to, well, once my name is cleared, if you wanted a different home and just kind of, like, leaves it at that. And I'm just like, oh, my heart. Like, oh, I love it so much. But we'll we'll see more of Sirius uh, pretty soon here. Um, And then we get all the we get all the time turner stuff. Um, and I loved. What one thing I want to highlight real quick is I love the moment where Dumbledore comes into the hospital wing and is telling Harry, no, we've lost. Like, Sir Sirius is about to be executed. There's nothing we can do about it. Like, we have completely lost. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, right before he's like, but if you use the time turner, then we could possibly do something. Um, and in this moment, Harry is realizing for the first time, like I've, I've heard this thing for like a long time growing up is like the time that you become an adult is the day that you realize that your parents don't have all the answers to everything. And it's kind of this it moment. So true. It is so true. Right. And Especially like when, once you become a parent, like, yeah, it was like the day I gave birth to my son that I was like, Oh, like I always thought like, once I'm an adult, I'll have it figured out. Like you're an adult, like you're responsible for these humans. And then once I became responsible for this tiny human, I was like, oh, we're all just cosplaying. Like, right, you know, like yeah. <laughs> knowing that we've got it figured out when absolutely do I not have it figured out. I am taking it day by day. I am taking it moment by moment, situation by situation, and I truly believe that's the norm at this point. Is right. no one knows. Yeah, totally. And it's it's this moment of like of Harry realizing, oh, maybe like Dumbledore doesn't have power over everything. Like he does he's not able to control every little thing. As much as we talk about like Dumbledore's big plan and stuff, he's not I almost said he's not magic, but he is. But like he he is not able to fully control every situation and Harry kind of has this moment where he realizes that and realizes that some things are going to be up to him and we see that uh come out to play in a big way over especially the last like 3 books uh where he's like not like working behind Dumbledore's back, but he's like, I got to do stuff that Dumbledore like can't do. Um, yeah. And so I think, I think this is a pretty big defining moment, but we all know what happens. They, they go and do the whole time Turner thing. They get Buckbeak back and, and all that. Um, and then there's a couple quotes from the ending that I really like where, well, earlier on when Lupin finds the map and Harry's talking to him, he's like, He's like, I bet you that these marauders would have been really entertained if they had gotten you out of the school. Like, I bet that that would that would cause them like a lot of laughter if they were able to to get you out. I can't remember the exact quote, but it was it was great. I love I love Lupin saying that because he's one of the marauders and and Harry doesn't know it yet. And he's like, oh, yeah, they would have found it pretty funny if they had been able to lure you out of the school. Um, and then he says at the very end. 
He says, I do say James would have been highly disappointed if his son had never found any of the secret passageways out of the castle. And I just, I love how Harry is just getting like a little bit of information about his dad throughout the book that he used to be like a bit of a troublemaker and, and all this stuff. And I don't know. It was just cool. Like seeing him learn more about who James was and who James's friends were and, oh. and all that kind of stuff. What's that? Prongs. Prongs, yes. There is a there is a great quote that had me in tears, like literally in tears. Um and I think it was uh it was it was Dumbledore that said this. He said, I knew your father very well, both at Hogwarts and after. He would have spared Pettigrew too. And then Harry asks about um He's like, I thought I saw my father when I cast my Patronus. And he says, your father is alive in you, Harry, and shows himself most plainly when you have great need of him. How else could you have produced that particular Patronus? Prongs wrote again last night. Mm. I was just like, oh my god. Yep. Like, <laughs> that part like made me tear up. There, there wasn't a lot in this book that made me tear up, but that was, that was one of them for sure. For yeah. sure. Uh, and then kind of the final um, the final quote of the book is the Dursleys come to pick up Harry. And he's like, yeah, I have a godfather and he's a mass murderer. So maybe don't mess around with me from now often or he'll be pretty upset. Like he, yeah. he wouldn't like that very much. And uh, it made them all freaked out because they know who Sirius Black is. And so I, I, I like the way I like the way that ended. Uh, and, yeah. you know, we, we've talked about it a million times at this point, but the movie just had him, like, riding off on his broomstick into, like, this weird freeze frame. And I was like, oh, that's very, like, early 2000s. <laughs> but, yeah, that gets us to the to the end here. Any any final thoughts? I know you guys are probably itching to get out of here, but any any final things before we go? No, I think we've covered, like, everything that I have on my list that I wanted to talk about. Cool. Likewise, my couple points have been noted. Yeah. Okay. Well, we uh I so I'm not sure exactly when uh we will be doing another Harry Potter one. I want to do it like I'm like eager to read Goblet of Fire and I would even say Sam like you're welcome to obviously just keep keep reading if yeah. you if you're itching to read Goblet of Fire uh cuz Goblet of Fire you know, I I kind of wonder if it's going to be in my top three, because I always thought that my top three were Half-Blood Prince, Sorcerer's Stone, and Prisoner of Azkaban. But now, having just read Prisoner of Azkaban, I love it. But I'm like, is it top three material? And so I'm interested to go to Goblet of Fire and be like, hmm, maybe, maybe this one makes it into my... In it has all these elements, like the competition, you know, like that's that's what's always made it the most interesting movie for me. Yeah, for sure. Which one is Half Blood Prince? Is that five or six? That is six. Six. That's the one where him and uh Yeah, no, I know. I just wasn't sure how it related to Goblet of Fire, if it was the next one, five, or if it was six. Right. Yeah, it goes Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix, where we and get that half, awful yeah. t shirt. Yeah. Um, and then, and then Half Blood Prince. Gotcha. Uh, that's the one where, uh, where him and Dumbledore go off on their adventure. Yep. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do it. I, so I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know exactly when it will be because, you know, we were talking before the show, we've got like at least four or five weeks worth of content to get through, uh, over the next few weekends. But yeah, as soon as we, finish up that stuff and we're ready i'm i'm stoked to get to goblet of fire i'm really really excited same and then gabe and i are going to the uh through the gryffindor podcast that they're doing live in seattle uh we got tickets for that all of all of the an original trio did it was, it's me chris and gabe yep and we all got vip tickets to this thing and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm I'm looking forward to asking him like fun Harry Potter questions and 
Um, I'll be honest. I'm going to ask them to be on the podcast. Like if I get to meet <laughs> them, I'm just, I'm going to ask them, you know, yeah. like, why not? So, uh, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully I don't get my dreams crushed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to doing that and just having an opportunity to hang out with, with, uh, everyone in, in person and whatnot. It'll be, it'll be super cool. Yeah. Other than that, I don't have too many, too many other updates, uh, for our viewers watching this now, you can look forward to our Stormlight Archive episode coming out very soon. We'll be doing Way of Kings uh, in just a couple weeks from the time of recording this. So uh, you can look forward to that. But otherwise, uh, Gabe, Sam, thank you for yep. hanging out, talking about Harry Potter. I know yes. we went on super long because we recorded some other stuff before this, but thanks for hanging in there. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, as for everyone else, it is time once again to go back to our house common rooms and prepare for the next episode of Potter Watch, where we will be discussing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Let us know down below in the comments what your favorite Harry Potter moments are, and I'm especially interested to see what you think of the differences between the movies and books, both from this installment that we've read today and the ones after because they do tend to yes. differ. differ yeah yep. like from totally like like from here this one was like a little bit different and then the next one got, a lot of people have problems with the goblet of fire movie because it's so different from the books um and then and so on and so on it they, they just get more and more different really until they get to deathly hallows and then i feel like deathly hallows is pretty true to uh to the books <clears throat> but long story long uh i'm interested in hearing what <laughs> you guys think about the differences because you know me i always love to talk about that kind of thing i love to rant about things that are that are too different um <laughs> Again, you can reach out to us on Twitter, Discord, and Patreon, which are all linked down below in the description. We always love chatting with you guys, so please reach out. And also let us know if you would like to be on the show. Uh, we would love to discuss one of the books or movies or whatever, whatever Harry Potter topic you'd love to talk about. We love talking with the community and would love to have you on. But that is going to be it for us today thank you so much for hanging out with us and until next time i won't have this namby pamby wishy-washy nonsense about not hitting people who deserve it <laughs> <laughs> nice Perfect. nice and a big shout out to caitlin thank you so much for backing us at the green bone tier